It's Fitter Friday here at Second Swing in the tour van at Minnetonka. I'm here with Fitter James Tracy. Morning, Thomas. How's everything going? You know what? Things are good. Things are good. All right. Well, we've got a chance to test the TS2 versus the TaylorMade M6. It's kind of getting midway through the golf season. You know, these both these drivers have been very successful on tour and in fittings this year. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's, I think it's a it's a really popular model uh, from both companies. Both kind of caters to the same player, looking for that higher MOI, a lot of speed, a lot of forgiveness, pretty low spinning for both brands this year on their higher MOI driver model. So it should be a really close head-to-head -head test. Yeah. Well, let's uh, get after and see a few numbers. Let's do it. Okay, Thomas Campbell, we're going to uh, put these two uh, clubs head to head. Sounds so let's good. Start yep. with that M6, and how are we setting that thing up for you? So, right now, just nine degrees standard um, BB6X, the shaft that I've been playing probably for about three or four years. Yep. Test both the same shaft, so Excellent. there is no bias, same degree loft, so there's no difference. Love it. So, this would be just a good apples to apples comparison yep. then. All right, well, let's see what we like to do. We use about five swings with each one. Sounds good. You know, even our our fittings in the store and our tour vans, we try to keep swings two, four to five swings with every club that we test. One, it keeps you know fatigue from playing a role, especially if you're testing multiple brands, multiple shafts. Yep. Also, it gives you a good snapshot. I mean, four or five swings—that's a representation of the front nine sometimes, you know, with your driver especially. Correct. And so, if a club is working really well after four, or if you haven't hit a good one after four, it's probably it's yeah. probably you know yep. you got You can learn a lot from that sample size. So. Yep. A good start. Nice little patent Thomas turnover there. <laughs> I was just saying, this club looks very colorful with my uh, yeah, you got my it. golf shaft, the club head, gray, black, orange, blue, white. Got a lot going on. It's a little eccentric, I would yep. agree. That was pretty nice. That was ripped. Yeah, I can't really nitpick that one too hard. That was a lovely ball. Pretty much my kind of numbers across the board. <laughs> Titleist and TaylorMade execs are probably sitting on the edges of their seat right now, <laughs> knowing that Quarter three and quarter four sales are going to be dramatically influenced <laughs> by the next seven or eight swings. So no, pr no pressure here, Thomas. Yeah, it's, it's definitely an interesting time, obviously, being, you know, July, August right right now. It's, you know, in between golf, yeah. go, golf equipment right now. So it's a little bit interesting time for us to test, trying to pr provide our viewers some content here to kind of look at a few things. You know, whereas we stay really busy with fittings, you know, our peak is, especially here in Minnesota, you know, kind of March, April, May. But yep. this is a great time of the year to test equipment because you got some rounds under your belt. Kind of know what your tendencies have been so far this season. Correct. Yep. Um, or come in and fine tune stuff. Too, exactly. So, yep. 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 Kind of follow up to a fitting you might have done earlier in the spring. So four in a row, really nice there, Thomas. Let's hit one more. Maybe a little healy. Yeah, pretty good though. Strong, yeah. strong showing there from Mr. Good Taylor. pattern, nice and consistent shot every time there. So while I spin this title list together for you, what would be some of your likes and dislikes about kind of just that club head in general? Club head in general, I mean, like I said, it's got you know a little bit of color going on, not over the top, but I felt like the gray and the black helped me align up pretty straight. I've had a little issues this year trying to get my driver lined up dead straight, and I feel like it matched up nicely. I had a nice little draw every single time on those five shots. So consistency, the pattern was very good. So that's one thing I definitely noticed. Felt, you know, felt pretty light too. I mean, I'm, I know I've got the same golf shaft in, the, in each one there. Just maybe I just felt like my swing felt pretty good this morning, and you know, it just felt pretty, pretty smooth. So off the club face, it didn't. Uh, it was felt a little, maybe a little softer off the club face. But it was, you know, obviously still had, you could still see the speed number was still there, so. In the neutral setting, how do you feel like that head, you know, squares up to the ball? It 
was pretty square to me. It seemed like it was pretty square. It definitely wasn't going to promote too much of a hook for me. Okay. Um, with the driver, I don't obviously don't want to overhook it, but I also don't like to leave it out to the right. For me, I want to have something that's confident where I can, you know, give me confidence to go after it a little harder and not worry about it staying out to the right and not overhooking as well. So perfect. It's set up really nice. It was Love it. very good. I think we've had a lot of good feedback from that M6 and M5 line this yep. whole year, really. I mean, even as, if aesthetically it looks a little like the last generation, you know, from a performance standpoint, you know, just numbers wise, feedback wise, fitting, adjustability. Yep. It's been a really strong year for TaylorMade, especially on the woods. Yeah, it um, sat really nicely at setup. I, you know, just look really good looking on it. So. Yeah, and along those same lines, you know, TaylorMade has made some strides. No company has probably made bigger strides this year in the big boys than Titleist in terms of year over year driver sales, driver performance. You know, so this would be a really interesting yep. kind of head-to-head -head matchup. The only thing that would be subtly different here is the loft, just because we obviously have an M6 that starts at nine. To get the loft as close as possible, we're going to take yep. a 9.5 TS2 and lower it just a little bit to 8.75, okay. you know, with the Titleist adapter there. Yep. So a quarter of a degree is not so a quarter too degree different, yeah, but outside off, of yeah. that, you know, we kept the lie angle neutral. Yep. I'm going to use the same shaft grip and length to compare these side by side. So whereas the TaylorMade was helping frame the ball with the graphics, obviously Titleist is much more of a it's pretty frame it with yep. some classy black, you know, plain, nothing, yep. right? Yeah, yep. it's just a, it's like a black abyss, you yep. know. The traditional that. kind of pear shaped black kind of look to it, really. Yeah, yep. yeah, it's clean. Yep. All right, well, let's see how this compares. Pretty nice looking shape yeah, there. Like I, say, I don't know, feel like I hit Contact it Contact wise was pretty good. good. Yeah, yeah, just caught a little bit of spin on that one. Yep. Interesting. All, all things together, very nice though. Yep. Nice bull flight. Yep, good carry. I left the club face open on that one. Trackman confirms. <laughs> <laughs> you are correct. <laughs> Yeah, that was just a bad wide open club face swing. Hmm. Five degrees open. How dare you? I know. This one won't, will not be open. <laughs> or as open. <sighs> All right, regroup, Thomas. Again, good contact there. Yep. Just Face not exactly where you want it to be at impact. Correct. Right. Yep. Fascinating difference. It is quite in terms of the pattern. I would I would yeah. say this though that you know where in years past maybe the D two model you know, hedging back to older Titleist drivers. Was, we thought of that more, the draw and yep. the, D, the three model D3s would be more anti-left. It's definitely not a hook head, the yeah, TS2. I am not, yeah. You know, and on the flip side, the M6 is certainly not a club that I'm reaching for to encourage, you know, players to draw it more. The D-type would be, for sure. Yep. But, you know, I would say that is kind of interesting how you're definitely turning the M6 over a little bit better, at least finding the face angle that you're kind of seeking out a little yep. bit better. You know, the spin and the height are higher with the TS2 right now, only just because the face is open and, you know, it's creating the physics to, you know, shoot that ball up in the air a little bit higher. Let's hit one more. But yeah, yeah it's a big takeaway. Yeah, right it's, now. it feels like it's just a little harder for me to get this thing to go left. Yep. Which, if I was swinging really good, would might be a good thing because then I can go after a little harder and not worry about it go too far Correct. left. But yeah, there's so I don't really want to leave it there. way open like I have. Yep. Good solid swing. That's pretty consistent. Just a little bit to the right with this with this one. Yeah. Just unable to release it over. Yeah. I mean, again, with 
some of the metrics that we can look for. You know, how was the club? Was it influencing, you know, your golf swing at all? Yep. An attack angle was exactly the same, you know, within two tenths of a degree, yep. both times swinging a little from the inside. You know, the big difference was, you know, face to path, the tailor made, you were able to rotate the face slightly closed, on average about a degree and a half closed. Yep. Titleist, just the opposite, on average about a degree and a half open. You know, so mm. that three degree difference in face angle as you struck the ball is the difference between white and yellow in our test yep. there. A little more left with the tailor made, a little more open and right. Left, a little TS2. less spin, right, a little more spin, a little higher. And Correct. Well, and that's why, the, that's why that number and the, the shape of your ball flight have such a huge impact over the distance um, and the direction of your shots. You know, what's interesting is if you take some of the numbers, they were a dead heat, right? Yeah. Ball speed, actually a little bit faster, a little bit more efficient with the TS2, yep. right? Because of that open club face and that push off higher, to the right, yeah. we saw peak height that was a little bit higher. And obviously that was coming from the launch and spin you were generating. So the carry distance was actually identical. Correct. You know, yep. so through the air, you weren't giving up any yardage. If I flip this graphic to carry distance, you're going to see a pretty dead even race there between yep. the two in terms of overall flight. The difference was just, you know, because of the lower spin and a little shallower landing angle, your tailor made was bouncing out there a little bit better. You know, hundred feet's a little more optimal. A landing angle in the thirties is much better for a driver. You know, so you're creating more optimal distance because of that number. Um, 47. 47 like would be iron. more. Yeah, I think like a, <laughs> like a six iron, five iron would be yeah. more in that 47. Yeah, to stop so. the green on the green pretty fast, right? With yeah. This club. <laughs> yeah. If you have any 275, 85 yard par fours that you're trying to <laughs> snuggle up close to. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that sample size would be perfect for that. So yeah. you know, it's kind of an interesting, you know, tinker. So, you know, again, head to head in the neutral setting at about the same loft, tailor made's a little bit better. That's where in a fitting environment though, we can try to optimize both drivers to make you know, the numbers even better. So Great, if yeah. TS2 won the, the contest for you in terms of the look and the feel, and that's the driver you want to put in your bag, yeah. well then our next couple swings would be you know, experimenting with the settings. How does the lie angle and loft, and even you know, the head weight, you know, changing the swing weight, how does that change the potential for that club face to square up a little bit better? You know, maybe that shaft and head together don't work as good as the BB and the M6 did. So how does the shaft profile maybe need to change slightly to give you the confidence to let that club face release a little bit better? So that's something that we'd look at. Same thing yeah. with the TaylorMade. You know, if we felt like the left side was a little bit too much frequent, you know, how do we change the settings, shaft, all those things to try to optimize those patterns. But from a head to head standpoint, yeah, in this test, the numbers were a little bit more um, divergent because of how you were hitting the, the two differently, you know, the face right. angle face really angle, yeah. caused that to be much more different. Yeah. You know, if you were a perfect robot and you had exactly the same face angle with both, well, everything would be the same. So that, that's the reality when you're testing equipment yeah. is that you, you are gonna adapt your swing to the club a little bit. Well, James, we got the chance to, well, I got the chance to hit a few different shots here. With, you know, I'd with like that morning where I get a chance to hit a couple <laughs> yeah, of these things. You know, to. I yeah. mean, my left, or my pointer finger is getting kind of worn out from all these videos, <laughs> but. Probably a good thing. We're getting better data. At least you don't have to hit too many delete buttons, at least. Yeah, that's, that's true. Thing. I don't think I've used a delete in a while with any of your videos, so that's good. So. That's a good thing. Yep. So we got a chance to compare TS2 versus the M6. Yeah. Um, one thing that really stood out to me was dispersion. I mean, felt we noticed with the I noticed with the tight list, I had a hard time turning it over. Yeah. Uh, M6, well, it was a little easier for me to turn over. Um, just maybe just been just a little more confidence ability. You know, I like that little right to left ball flight hate the left to right. You know, TS2 was just, it was carrying the same distance, but just just staying out to the right. Yeah, I think one of the comments that you made about the M6, which I think is the reason why some of these companies will put head graphics on there, is that it does help to frame the ball. So it could have just been a setup thing. You yeah. know, if yep. you knew that the M6 was setting up correctly and you're framing the ball in the right place and your hit location was perfect, that was giving you a nice little draw. You know, whereas the Titleist, you know, maybe with to your eye, with the way that that head and crown are set up, you just weren't yeah. setting up exactly the same way. Cause we did yeah. see that the operator changed his, his bias with the face a little bit, one club to the next, which isn't something that we can really count for in the settings or the shaft or the grip. We didn't make any changes that would have intentionally done that. Correct. So I think that's why, you know, especially when there's two clubs that you really like, like these two, and you think you might hit one better or you want one better, it's really good to come in and test them. That's yeah. why we hit them the way we do. We hit them agnostic. Yeah. So now you have the confidence to know, hey, with the best performing head from both companies at the same shaft, at the same loft essentially, this is the one I hit better. That gives me more confidence in a purchase and that 
kind of earns a spot in my bag. So yep. I think that's a great way to compare clubs the way we did this morning. I think it definitely comes down to adjustability as well, getting fit. Um, you mentioned, you know, TS2, I missed it to the right. We do have adjustability settings. We could always play it a little more upright and may bring it back a little straighter if I particularly like this head look better than the M6 too. So yeah, that's why we fit. budget an hour in our driver fitting. You know, we yep. used maybe 10, 15 minutes like we did here to figure out which head you like. And we dive into all the nitty gritty stuff to try to really optimize that ball flight for yeah. you. So. All right, well, M6 was just, just snuck out just a little bit today, but you know, tie this with adjustability, might have gotten there as well, so. Exactly. Yep.